Hey, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about the Supermicro CSE 216 and specifically the motherboards inside the X11 DPH-T, DPH-TQ, and DPH-I. Let's get rolling. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Super Micro X11 DPH family of motherboards. If you find anything in this video useful, do us a favor and click that like and smash that subscribe. Well, first things first, uh, I want to point out that this is an extended ATX motherboard. Uh, I always like to uh, kind of start for Super Micro with the different types of boards they are because uh, specifically Super Micro is great about compatibility uh, where you could take, uh, you know, one board and put it into different types of chassis depending on if you're looking for, you know, a 1U or a 2U or a beefy, you know, 3 or 4U or something like that. Um, so I always like that. Um, you know, the, the, their stuff's kind of interchangeable like that. Um, as far as CPUs are concerned, uh, this uh, family of boards takes two CPUs. It's an LGA3647, which means it's an Intel Xeon scalable first or second gen uh, would be the CPUs that you can use. As far as RAM is concerned, uh, it takes DDR4 memory. There's 16 DIMM slots inside. Uh, there's a number of different speeds you can use. You can go as low as 2133, uh, 2400, 2666, 2933, uh, or technically you can put in 3200s, but they're going to clock back down to 2933, so I figured I'd point that out before you go spend extra money. Uh, as far as different sizes, this is what uh, I find uh, incredible. Uh, the different sizes, you can go as low as an 8 gig, 16 gig, 32 gig, 64 gig, 128 gig, or a 256 gigabyte. I love that. You can put 256 gigabyte DIMMs. Now, I will be honest, uh, for ECC registered and load reduced, it's expensive as all get out, but technically they will work, okay? Unless that gets us to our next point. What type of RAM can you use for this machine? You can use three types of memory. First off, you can use ECC registered, also known as an RDIM. You can also use load reduced, known as an LR DIM. Or the third option is Intel Optane Persistent Memory, um, which is just known as Intel Optane or Intel Persistent. Okay, uh, so those are three choices. Uh, people ask which one do you recommend? It really, uh, it kind of depends. Uh, I kind of like Intel Optane as far as the uh, the price point, but the problem with Intel Optane is you can, uh, it, and this is only if you are really spending a ton of money and you want to max it out, is that you're going to get less uh, cap or less. Um, overall scalability because Intel Optane you can get a max of two terabytes using eight 256 gigabyte modules at 2666 speed okay and people go why can't you put in 16 well with Intel Optane you can only put uh, one module per channel which means at the start of each channel and then you skip the second one okay now with uh, ECC registered on the other hand you can put in 16 by 256 gigabytes and go all the way up to 4 terabytes at 2933 speed so you can see it's not only a higher uh, scalability but it's also faster but as I mentioned a 256 gigabyte ECC register module is just expensive as all get out uh, so you're actually better off going with Intel Optane as far as just you know price point right now with load reduced uh, same exact deal as ECC registered you can get up to four terabytes using eight by 256 gigabyte uh, at two, uh, 2933 for the speed, okay? Now that we know a little bit more about the memory itself, let's go ahead and open the machine up. I want to show you the different channels, uh, how you would load it, especially if you're using something like Intel Optane, which uh, slots you would use. But before we do, I'm going to grab my uh, ESD gear. Really, you never want to be inside a machine without ESD gear, so I'll be right back. All right, we got our ESD gear on. So first things first, let's open her up. Uh, you're going to take these two tabs right here, you're going to push them in and you're going to pull back. Sometimes it can be a little snug. All right, you see it's opened up. Pop it up. Set it to the side, nice and simple. All right, so um, we'll go over just a couple things. You'll have your uh, back plane here. You got all your fans here. Uh, you have your controllers back here in the PCI slots. You got your hot swap power supplies over here. Uh, there's actually uh, two more slots back here that you could hook up uh, some drives to, um, and then you got uh, your CPUs and memory modules as we discussed. So you have uh, an air baffle on top of it right now. So let's go ahead and get the air baffle removed. Uh, it basically, there's some clips that just kind of slide in, so you're going to want to lift it straight up, um, and you'll see these, these clips. So when you put it back in, that's how you're going to want to do it. So we'll just set that to the side for now. So as we discussed, two CPUs. CPU 1 controls the eight DIMM slots up here. CPU 2 controls the eight DIMM slots back here. So with CPU 1, you will notice that there are actually six channels for eight DIMM slots, uh, which I've noticed Supermicro uh, tends to do that. I don't really set too often with Dell or HP. Uh, this is more of a Supermicro thing. So what that ends up uh, looking like is this is A1, this is A2, this is 
excuse me, excuse me, I said that wrong. This is A1, this is B1, and this is C1. Okay, so you got A1, B1, C1, and then the black slot over here is A2. So what that ultimately looks like is all these are the starts of the channel, and then A1 and A2 are the uh, have two slots for that channel, and then uh, B B1 and C1 over here basically are just their own standalone channels. If that makes sense, okay. Now when you uh, come back over here, it's going to be very very similar. So you're going to have D1, E1, F1, and E1 and F1 are going to have are going to again be their own individual channels. Um, and then over here you're going to have D2. So you're going to have D1 and D2 um, are uh, two for that channel, okay. And then when you come back over here, it's the exact same deal for CPU2. A1, B1, C1, A2, over here, D1, E1, F1, D2. Okay, so nice and simple. And also, in case you're concerned, uh, right in between the heat sinks, you probably can't see on the camera, it is all labeled right there. Supermicro has uh, done us a favor. They've put it on the motherboard itself, a nice, easy to read um, code for you. And then, of course, it's color coded, which is also very helpful. So, all right, before we start loading them, one tip that I always recommend make sure all your tabs are open. I know it's. Uh, a simple and easy thing, but you don't want your tabs fighting you when you're trying to uh, insert your modules. So I just pop them all open, nice and easy. Okay, so all right, now they're all open. We will start to do our install. Um, another thing I like to note before we get going, uh, right here on this, uh, we're, we're just putting in 32 gig uh, ECC regs as well. Um, you can do a lot higher, um, but this is just 32 gig. So anyhow, you'll notice right here, uh, there is a notch in the middle, also known as a key. This key is very important because this key is not perfectly in the middle, which means you have to line it up properly. Uh, there's a tab that's sticking up on the dim slot. If you don't line it up properly, you could potentially damage the leads or you could damage the uh, the memory module, it, I'm sorry, the uh, the dim slot itself. So you, again, you just line it up, simple things um, to make your life easier. So this is how this one's gonna get lined up. We're gonna put it in A1 since that's the first channel, okay? Now you'll notice I put the module in. It looks like it's in. I'm not touching it. It's, it's in the, the, the slot. However, it's not fully seated. So if we were to boot up a machine like this, it would not register this module. So what you need to do is, and you might not hear it on this, but you want to hear these two clicks. Click one, click two. And so what that is, um, you can see that these three tabs over here are all sticking further out. They're kind of jetting out, whereas this tab is in. What that means is it has um, caught the edge of the module and has pulled the module down so the leads are fully inserted into the dim slot. Now this is important because again you need to have a good connection so that you can register the module um, and that is unfortunately an all too common error that we see uh, where a user thinks that they have a failed module and it's not a failed module it's just that they have not fully seated the module so one of the things we always recommend to people is hey just rotate your modules around uh, it, it takes a couple seconds and generally what it is is you have a seating issue and you might not uh, recognize it but as soon as you move them around boom you fix it you don't even realize you fixed it okay alright so now we're gonna go ahead um, and start on the second side over here. Uh, I don't want to waste y'all's time, so I'm going to just uh, do this, and we're going to fast forward as we go. All right, so just like that, took a matter of minutes. Uh, we were able to install uh, 1632 gigs, uh, which, you know, I understand you can put more into this machine, but as far as a price point, uh, 32 gigs are, are, are you know, fairly reasonable on a price per gigabyte uh, once you start getting to you know 64 gig and 128 gig especially 256 gig uh, it gets kind of crazy as far as your, your you know your price per gigabyte um, so I'm, I'm personally a big fan of 32 gigs uh, we, we sell a ton of them um, 64 gigs is getting more reasonable uh, but again um, for what we're doing for this application uh, 1632 gigs is, is going to do a, an amazing job for this machine. So anyhow, now that we've done it, we need to put the uh, air baffle back on, which is going to be really simple. You just uh, need to line it up and put your clips in, and you'll see it's nice and flush. Everything is nice and flush. And then put the top on and you call it a day. Hey, if you made it this far, do us a favor. Click that like, smash that subscribe. And if you're looking for any upgrades for your X11, do us a favor, email us at sales at cloudninja.com. That's sales at cloudninja.com. We've got a ton of different memory, new, used, you name the speed, you name the side, and we got all varieties. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.